All right, this is Unit 6, Trigonometry, and we're going to be talking about the three basic trig ratios on this lesson. The basic thing that I'm going to first start with is that you are needing to be using a TI-83 or TI-84. If you're going to match up what I'm doing on the calculator, you need to be using one of these calculators. If you don't have one, you can actually use any scientific calculator, still does sine, cosine, tangent, which we're talking about today, and that should work out just fine. The very first thing that you're going to need to do with one of these calculators though is actually hit the mode key to change it from one of its default settings. So when, once you turn it on, hit the mode key. Next thing, you actually need to select degree instead of radian. It defaults to radian, which is another way to measure angles. You're going to want to go down and hit enter on degree so it's highlighted. When I hit second quit to get out of there, it's going to stay in degree. Now we're ready to talk about what sine, cosine, tangent are. Basically, they're the three basic trig functions. They're used for finding values on triangles whenever you have an angle measure and only two legs. The sine function will always be opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine function is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent function is opposite over adjacent. Now I do write out the phrase um, as S O H C A H T O A to help me remember these ratios. We're going to see how it's working here in just a second. All right, for these first two examples, you're actually going to not need your uh, graphing calculator. You can just kind of put it to the side. We're just going to find the ratios, identifying ratios. Now, I'm going to point out the abbreviations here that sign is S-I-N-E, but they abbreviate it as S-I-N. Um, that's not pronounced sin, it's still sine. Cosine is abbreviated as C-O-S, and tangent is T-A-N. Now, very first thing I'm going to do is just write out my little phrase really quick. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. Now what I'm going to do is identify what's the opposite leg, what's the adjacent leg, and what's the hypotenuse on this triangle. In reference to angle A, because that's what all three questions were asking from. So everything will be in reference from angle A right here. Now, first of all, the hypotenuse is pretty easy to spot. It's the 5. So I'm going to label that as the hypotenuse with an H. As far as the 4 and the 3 goes, from angle A, 4 is the opposite leg from it. And 3 is the adjacent leg because it's next to it. So this is adjacent for 3, opposite for 4. Now I'm ready to tell what the sine, cosine, and tangent of A are. So here's my first answer. The sine of angle A is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. So opposite is 4, hypotenuse is 5. 4 over 5. Now you'd want to reduce that if you could at all. That's actually good right there. Now, second answer, cosine of A is equal to adjacent leg over hypotenuse. From angle A, the adjacent leg is 3, the hypotenuse is 5, so 3 over 5. Now for tangent, it's opposite leg over adjacent leg. So I'm going to write it out. Tangent of A, the opposite leg is 4, divided by the adjacent leg is 3. And they, these would be my three answers. There's my three ratios that would help me in solving problems that we'll see in a little bit. So on every single one of these problems, you're actually going to see me writing this phrase out to help me with the problem. That I'll continue. Now on this problem, I'm going to be finding the sine of B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. Now I'm working with the other angle in this case. So that does change the problem, even though it's the same diagram as the previous one. My answers will be different. Now, first of all, the hypotenuse is still 5. But notice that the opposite leg would now be the 3, because that's opposite from angle B. And 4 is now adjacent to angle B, so that's now my adjacent. So this is going to change my answers really quick. So first of all, the sine of B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 3, hypotenuse is 5, 3 over 5. The cosine of B will equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which will be 4 over 5. 
and the tangent of B will be equal to opposite leg over adjacent leg, so 3 over 4. And for each of those, I was referencing this phrase up here. Tangent was opposite leg over adjacent leg. I was doing that for all three, and I've found my ratios. What we're going to practice next is how to find a missing side value. All right, this is my first problem. You're going to find out that I'm actually going to rewrite the sine cosine tangent phrase. Now you've seen me write that phrase out. That's going to help me identify which of the three functions I'm going to use on this particular problem. First thing I do is go and reference the angle that they've provided me. If they've given me both acute angles, I just pick one and go with it. Now, from this angle, I'm going to label the three sides. First of all, the hypotenuse is really easy to label. It's always across from the 90 degrees, so this is my hypotenuse. Now I'm going to go to the opposite leg and label it as O for opposite leg and the 13 ends up being adjacent to the 52 degrees. Now I'm going to go over here and actually um, find which function I'm going to use. And what I'm noticing here is that hypotenuse is not involved on the problem. So I'm not going to be using sine because it involves hypotenuse. Nor am I going to be using cosine because it involves hypotenuse. I'm going to be using the tangent function and now I'm going to show you how to set that up. I will set it up as the tangent of the angle, which is what I was doing previously, 52 degrees in this case, is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. In this case the opposite leg is x, so that's going to go on the numerator, divided by the adjacent leg, 13. Now I'm ready to solve this. Um, that was the setup. Let's go ahead and solve. Times it by 13 on both sides in order to solve for x. Whatever you're dividing by over here will get multiplied over to the other side, even if it's a variable. So this would result in 13 times the tangent of 52. Now I've actually solved it for x. I'm done solving. All that I've got left to do is use my calculator to type this in. So have this written down, and I'll show you how to type it in to the calculator. So now I've got my calculator. I'm going to type in what I found as an answer. 13 times the tangent, which is right here above the right parenthesis key of 52. Close the parenthesis. If I didn't hit the times key, it would automatically multiply, but I did anyways. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, here's my answer. It did say round to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to write it as 16.6 for this answer. So x is approximately, you'll see me use the wavy lines instead of equals for approximately, I rounded here, 16.6. And I'm done with finding x. All right, going to reset and do the problem over again, but things have changed. I've got x over here on the adjacent leg now to the 52 degrees. And I've got 15 opposite of it. And the hypotenuse is still empty, so I'm not going to use it. In fact, I'm still going to be using the tangent function on this one, the ratio, excuse me, and neither of the other two because they both involve hypotenuse in some way. All right, time to set it up. So I know that's the tangent function, and it is of the angle, 52 degrees again. This one does work out different. That's the reason why I wanted to show this. And that will equal opposite divided by adjacent. Now here the opposite leg is 15 divided by the adjacent leg which is x. So what's different here is that the variable ended up on the denominator. That's really no big deal. Let me show you why. Very first thing I do is I just multiply both sides by x. So whatever you're dividing by over there on the right just multiply both sides by it even if it's a variable. That will result in x times the tangent of 52 equal to 15. Now, this look, might look atrocious, but notice the multiplication. All I got to do is just divide both sides by this number, and that's what you got to think of it as, as being just a number. So I want to divide by the tangent of 52 on both sides. And once I've done that, I would have x equals 15 divided 
by the tangent of 52. So when the last problem is being multiplied here, you just got to divide it. I'll show you how to do that now on the calculator. So write that down, and I'll show you how to type it in. So I got 15 divided by the tangent of 52, so I'm typing that in, 15. And I'm hitting the division key. Tangent of 52 degrees. I'm going to close it with the right parenthesis. I'm just ready to hit enter now. Now remember, I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, so 11.7 is my answer. So x is approximately 11.7. And we're done with this problem. All right, we've got two more examples on this video. So you're going to see me do the same work two more times. However, these are going to be tan functions other than tangent on these. Now, first thing I'm going to do is write out sine, cosine, tangent, and what they are. Same phrase every single time. You just have to remember it. Now. I'm going to be working off of my acute angle that they gave me, 32 degrees, there it is. So now I'm going to label the three sides. First of all, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees, so I usually start with it. Next, 32 degrees is opposite of the 35, because it doesn't touch that side, and it is adjacent to this leg right over here. Adjacent meaning next to. All right, now I can see that the adjacent leg is what's not involved on this problem. So I'm not going to be using cosine because it needs an adjacent leg. So I'm going to scratch that off. Nor am I going to be using tangent because it needs an adjacent leg. I'm going to be using the sine function on this one, which, yes, it is, always, it is usually pretty much just one of the functions that you could use on the problem. All right, so now I've picked my function, which is the sine of my angle, which is 32 degrees here equals, and it says the ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite leg is 35 divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. Now this is another case where the variable ended up being on the denominator, the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is multiply by x on both sides. So I get x times the sine of 32 here on the left equal to 35 on the right. Canceled out the x on the right hand side. Next I need to solve for x. So since it's being multiplied by the sine of 32, I'm going to divide by the sine of 32 on both sides. Now that's going to cancel on the left. I'm just going to have x equals 35 divided by the sine of 32. I'm done solving. I just need to type this in my calculator, so write it down, and I'll show you me doing that. So here you can see me. I'm going to type in what I had written on my paper, 35, divided by the sine of the angle, 32. And close my parentheses, and hit enter, and I get 66.04. I'll write that as 66.0, which is to the nearest tenth. So x is approximately 66. Point zero. People say, is it important for me to put point zero? That shows you that that shows that you did round to the nearest tenth, as was said in the instructions. So technically, yes, it is important for you to show that point zero. And that wraps up this problem. Got one more to go here. All right, I've already done a little bit of work here to the left on this problem, where I've already written out sine, cosine, tangent, and what their ratios are. Next, I'm going to reference the 40 degrees and write that the 9 is the hypotenuse across from 90, that this side over here to the right is the opposite leg, and the x is the adjacent leg to the 40. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set up my function. Looking at it, I have adjacent, I have hypotenuse, I do not have an opposite leg. So since I don't have an opposite leg, it's not sine because it needs opposite, nor is it tangent. This one is cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out to the side here that it's cosine of my angle which is 40 degrees equals it needs to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse. That's going to be x divided by 9. Alright in this case the variables on the numerator makes it a little easier to solve. I just got to multiply both sides by 9 and I'm done. So times by 9 here and on this side. So my answer is going to be 9 times the cosine of 40 
equals x. Now I'm ready to type this in my calculator. Now what I neglected to show was that the sine key is just above the 7 there on the calculator and the cosine, C, cosine key is just above the 8. So here I'm going to type in what I had found as an answer. So 9 times the cosine of 40 degrees, close my parenthesis, and hit enter. And that's going to be 6.9 on this one. The 8 will get rounded up due to the 5 or higher after it. So 6.9 is my answer for x. Uh, all right, that wraps up the lesson. Uh, let me know what questions you have. I do want to throw one more reminder there. Every time you sit down with the calculator, you want to check its mode to make sure that it's in degree. If you need to see that, go back to the beginning of the video. It's the first thing I did. So every single time, make sure you make that check. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you.